It's Fema Astrum FN64. What does that look like? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Here we have our Tri-X in blue and the Astrum FN64 in red. So we have quite a steep curve with a very distinct uh, sloping shoulder and toe. So what we're going to see is a relatively high contrast image compared to the Tri-X. The sloping shoulder at the top means we're going to lose some tonal separation, most likely up in the upper end. The shadows may have a little bit of blocking, uh, but since it's steeper than the Tri-X, we may actually get some separation down there that we're hoping for. So let's see what this print looks like. Uh, most likely is going to be high contrast since we uh, were technically using a copy film here. So let's take a look at the print. Here we have our Tri-X and our Astrum FN64 print. Now, clearly we're a little hot in our highlights. We can see that here as well. It's just overdeveloped. Uh, this was from the recommended time in D76 from the manufacturer. It, it's a little too aggressive. 
this is some weird film in general. So this and the two Svema films that I, I shot come on a clear base, a very thin clear base, as opposed to any sort of tinted or gray base like just about every other film out there. So very, very low base fog. Um, it's also very, very thin, very thin base. Uh, so it feels very flimsy and easy to damage. It did come out at a 64 speed. So there, there is that. It did get full box speed. And from what I understand, and I could be wrong about this, so uh, if, if you all have better information than I, I believe this film and the Svema films are technically discontinued. And they are just being repackaged from bulk rolls. Now, I can tell you that part at least is true because these came in the cheap disposable cassettes that you would bulk roll your film on. It was not a factory canister by any means. So at least I know they are being packaged from a bulk roll. Whether or not they are technically discontinued, uh, if you have good information on that, please let me know. Okay, back to this specific film. So it is a very fine grain film. We're going to zoom in a little bit and take a peek at those particulars. But from what we can glean here, we are getting a full scale. That's great. A little overdeveloped, as we mentioned. Um, and then we are getting definitely a weird tonal rendition here. So we've seen this before. Some of the micro copy films are giving this same sort of result. We are red sensitive, lacking in our cyan sensitivity. So with this being overdeveloped, it's hard to tell that with the shirt, which was cyan in color, that it's underexposed compared to there, but I believe it probably is, had it been developed to the same contrast, uh, it would have ended up being a little bit darker. The skin that we're gonna see up here is gonna be completely blank white because it's just, too dense uh, since I didn't change my printing times. Well, that is, I changed printing times solely for the shadows from print to print um, and let the contrast of the film remain the same. So we're not going to get a whole lot of information up here, but we are going to look at it. Otherwise, from the large view here, really what we're going to see is that's off. So let's go ahead and zoom in, take a look at the grain structure. Looking at this shot, uh, we can see we are getting a very smooth, small grain. Being a 64 speed film, we would expect that. Uh, it is faster than the other uh, sort of copy films we've looked at, uh, or will look at, depending on when I release these. So we are getting full 64 speed, but we are still getting very, very fine grain. And if you look at the wisp of hair that's sticking out in silhouette against the background, it is also very sharp. So that's good to know. Skin tone under the shadow of my eye does come out a bit weird. That could be that lighter gray or a lighter red sensitivity. So we'll see when we look at some other portions. Okay, here with the shoulder and silhouette against the background. Again, we're getting a nice clear shot of that smooth tone for nice grain appraisal. And it's just nice and sharp. So we are getting good detail. Uh, we're getting good gradation in the folds of the shirt. So copy film or not, it's still providing a pretty good uh, sort of um, gray scale, gray tone. Now you can kind of see right through here there's a line that uh, is a very very fine scratch in the base of the film uh, whether or not that's from the camera or from the factory or from re-rolling it's hard to know uh, considering I shot all this film all at once or, or back to back rather and no other film had that. I would say it's probably from re-rolling or the factory, or it could be the canister that it was put into. Either way, 
uh, these clear base films, they show every every little fault, every little uh, defect, because they just don't have any base fog to hide it. But being very, very thin, they're also, I think, very fragile, uh, just what it's made of. Um, it may be acetate like regular camera film. Um, it's just maybe not a good quality acetate. Who knows? At any rate, there's some fine scratches that show up every now and then on some of this film, so just be careful. Okay, the lighted side, obviously we've got some overdevelopment as we can see in the skin tone. Uh, however, we can see we are getting very, very fine, sharp detail in the small portions. Uh, we are picking up a little bit more of the texture of the fabric of the shirt in general through this portion that we're not necessarily seeing with the Tri-X, and that would just be from the fine grain and high resolution of this film. Uh, but uh, if you're looking for that kind of detail, um, look at the other two films I, I have done, um, which again, may or may not have been published yet. I don't remember what order we're putting these out, uh, but the Agfa Copex and the uh, Adox HR50 can give you uh, better or equal results with a little bit better, uh, what do I wanna say, quality control. Okay, let's look at the last section. And here we are with the face. Now it's hard to make any sort of judgments. It is overdeveloped, as we said. Uh, the blue of my eye, though, is coming out nice and light. Um, even though it is technically going to underexpose that particular color, uh, we are getting good detail in the eyebrow, the lid, the skin texture is coming out through pretty, pretty good. Uh, we're just not getting much information as to how the highlights are treated or separated since we're just overdeveloped. So that's a shame there. However, it is still a very sharp film. Uh, it's going to give you some really great detail. We're just going to have to learn how to better handle development in order to get the best tonal range that we can get. All right, that's going to do it for this film since we can't really look at a uh, better highlight comparison. So thank you for watching. If you would like to help su support this channel so that we can bring more comparisons or more materials in, uh, please check out my Patreon or my merchandise sales down in the links below. Appreciate you all watching. We'll see you next time.